Hi, everybody. Welcome to History 310 Online. I'm Chris Padgett, the professor for this course, and I want to take this opportunity to say hello, introduce myself, and give you an overview of what the course will do, how we'll do it, and how you can get through it in good shape. Now, since you're watching this video, it's clear you've found your way into the course website on Canvas. So you've already accomplished one of the first and most important objectives. You've logged on. Chances are you've looked around the home page or you've found this video. If so, you may have noted my contact information. That is my office telephone number, email address, and lots of other pertinent information found on the home page. You often check this home page, in fact, every week, to check the assignments, to find out what your assignments are, to get an overview of that week's materials, and go to that week's module to find the resources you'll need. Whenever I have important announcements or reminders, I'll post them to this home page. So again, logging on and checking out whatever you find there is going to be an important part of what you do. And not just every week, but probably more frequently uh, than that throughout the semester. Now, I'll mention what we're doing this first week, even though I've also posted a, a week one assignment overview on our co uh, course home page. I want to reinforce the importance of a couple things. One, Everyone is required to make a discussion post this week. The instructions to the introductory discussion board are found under the course orientation and getting started module. But the thing you need to know is if you don't manage to get your introductory post up by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m., that is just before midnight, you risk getting dropped from the course. That's because I'll use this first non-graded discussion board assignment as the official attendance for the course this week. You probably know in a regular on-ground class, if you don't show up the first day, the instructor can drop you. In order to accommodate as many students as possible, we have to manage our enrollment. That means dropping folks who don't show up and adding folks who will. In this online environment, obviously, you are not physically showing up, but you are logging in, and you are posting to the discussion board by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. to prove that you are attending the course. And if that should fail, then chances are I will drop you from the roll sheet and add someone from the waiting list to take your place. The other point about the assignments this week regards the syllabus quiz. This is a non-graded quiz, meaning that your score will not count toward your final grade in the class. However, you are required to take and pass this quiz as a condition for going forward with the week two materials. That's because it's terribly important that you understand the basic structure of the course uh, and the course policies. Experience has shown that students who are knowledgeable about those things are better prepared to succeed in the course. So check out the syllabus quiz. It's located under the same Getting Started module as your introductory discussion post assignment. Complete it by Sunday by 11.59 p.m. That is just before midnight on Sunday. You can retake it as many times as necessary to earn the 80% passing score. So both of those first week assignments are quite important in allowing you to go forward to the second week and subsequent weeks in the course. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I think that part of the success that comes with being in an online class is simply habit forming. You make habits. You get into a habit of doing virtually the same routine every week. Now, I try to accommodate you in doing that by giving you regular postings that you can look forward to. So, for example, on Monday mornings, I post the following week's assignment overview so that you can hit the ground running and complete that week's assignments in good fashion. Most of the due dates will fall on Sundays at 11.59 p.m. as well, and when there is a different due date or time, I'll let you know that well in advance. But getting into that Monday to Sunday rhythm, creating those habits, checking assignments, completing them during the week or on the weekend, and submitting them by Sunday night, I think will go a long way towards your success in this course. Another thing I'd like to encourage you to do early and often is when you submit something for a grade, like a discussion post, or say your homework assignments, then when you receive your grade, you don't simply look at the score or the grade itself, but you also read the comments that I provide 
and look at the scoring rubric that I send along with your score. I think that what students have suggested over the semesters is that perhaps more than anything else, that has helped them understand my expectations and to understand the criteria I use in grading your assignments. You know, online has a bit of a bad rap, I think, for being somehow less personal than an on-ground class. I mean, I get it. After all, an on-ground class, you're showing up to a physical space every week, you're together in that physical space, the classroom, with your fellow students or with the instructor. But let's face it, how often have you sat in a classroom and never said a single word to the instructor, never had any actual direct interaction with your instructor? I bet that for more than a few of you it's true. But even if you're the type of student who likes to participate in the classroom, likes to raise your hand, there's something to be said for what an online environment offers you both in terms of participation and one-on-one -on -one connection with your instructor. After all, I will correspond with you on a regular basis throughout the semester. You will be corresponding not only with me, but also with your fellow students through the discussion boards. In other words, we'll be talking to each other all the way through this semester. So, again, get in the habit early on of reading what others are saying, reading the scoring comments I give you, reading the grading rubrics I provide the messages I post and the emails I send, and when necessary, you should email me and we can carry that discussion further. Now, just so you know, I do have a regular office in Davies Hall on the American River College campus, and in that office, I hold office hours each and every week on Tuesday and Thursday. So check the syllabus to see when those hours are, and if you live in the area and are in the neighborhood, you can come by campus, perhaps we can talk about your work in person. Keep in mind that I also have an online office hour on Mondays at 3 p.m. where you can expect a quick response from me should you email. Of course, that's generally true. I, I can usually reply to most emails within a few hours, uh, although sometimes on the weekends it may be the next day. If you're interested in setting up a video conference, however, with me during that Monday online office hour, just let me know. All right. So there's so much we can say about the course, but as a student, I never particularly enjoyed having an avalanche of information falling on my head the first week or the first day of the semester. So I'm just going to bypass a lot of the information you can get by reading the course syllabus and which will become clear to you over time. Instead, what I think I want to say here in the remainder of this little screencast that I've done for you is something about why this course is valuable. I suppose you know it's valuable in an academic sense. You are in three units of credit. It's a transferable course. It's a general education course. It certainly adds to your academic transcript in that sense. But I think even beyond that, there is a value, a value to taking a course like History 310 online. Students who are not particularly in love with history will sometimes say that, you know, you read about the past. It's one thing after another. It's dates and names and so much to memorize. And what does it have to do with you anyway? Well, there's certainly that element to it, and you're going to have to learn a lot of names and, Dave's, uh, names and dates this semester. Otherwise, we'd have blank spaces or maybe awkward silences where specific information is required. But in all seriousness, I want, to see, I want you to see beyond the names and dates. I want you to understand that history really is a kind of autobiography connects to you and your life. In other words, you're not just reading about other people somewhere else at some uh, other time. What you're doing is reading about your own life, the one you live every day. In other words, how you came to be who you are at this address in history, namely the 21st century. Because whether you know it or not, you're standing on top of a ladder and every rung of that ladder before you represents the actions, the intentions, the drama, the lives, the conflicts, the ideas that informed the generations before us. Maybe you've heard the line from the poet John Donne, that no man is an island. Well, that's certainly true in history. No man, no woman is an island in history. We are all connected. And not just to last week or the week before, or connected only to our immediate family members and friends. But in the larger story of humanity, which includes the story of the United States of America, we are connected 
in infinite ways to those who have come before us. So if only to understand how come we came to be this way, why we live the way we do, the issues that concern us, why are they the issues that concern us, our political attitudes, our cultural perceptions, even our personal desires have all been in some basic way shaped and conformed to the actions of those before us. So yes, how did we get here and how did we turn out this way? And how does knowing that help make us uh, or help us make informed choices going forward? That's what I want to spend the next 16 weeks or so investigating. And at the end of the semester, I guess my guarantee to you is that if you followed through, you've paid attention, you've stayed engaged, you've turned in the assignments, that you're going to have a better, more insightful answer to those questions than you do right now. Because ultimately, that's the value added of history. It gives us a greater sense of ourselves in the larger context of the world we inhabit. And at the very least, therefore, gives us multiple perspectives on the choices we make going forward. I look forward to making that investigation with you this semester. And please remember, do not hesitate to get in touch with me should you have any questions. Have a great first week, everyone.